everybody, this is Ori from AstroWeb and I'm going to show you how to process orders in Magento 2. Um, but before I do that, I want to explain that depending on the business you have, uh, your flow for processing orders may be different. So a lot of businesses have everything automated. So for example, if you have a warehouse that takes care of your orders, um, you can set up Magento to automatically transmit a new order information to the warehouse, they would take care of the shipping, pack it, put a, a slip, a tracking number, update Magento programmatically either by the API or some kind of extension, and then everything would be automatic. Uh, but in the case of kind of a, usually smaller companies or ones that have not integrated automation, um, you're going to have to actually process them from the back end. And so this is what I'm going to show you right now. Um, and another thing is, Every company, even if you do process in the back end or if you don't, you may have a different set of, um, let's call it flow flow or status changes in, in the flow. So for example, um, a customer may buy from you, uh, then the admin gets a notification. You may have to review an order or not, maybe you know fraud reviews, things like that, maybe not. And then you start processing, uh, taking care of the package, sending out. Okay, so there may be different changes in that flow depending on your uh, system. So I'm going to show you kind of a more popular one, a more common one, and then uh, if you have any questions, please ask me on the videos. I'll be happy to help with uh, many different types of variations and the answers to any questions you may have. Okay, so I just made a test order on this test site, and this is order 00002. Um, so it shows me right here. Um, so of course the admin got an email, I got an email, I went to the back end and I saw this new order that needs to be processed. Okay, So this is the order number, this is the website it came, right now we only have one website, one language. Uh, when was it purchased, bill to name, etc. So if I want to see a little bit more information on this list, I can add more columns here, which is subject for another video. Okay, um, so I see here the status. One of the most important things are the status. I see that the status is processing. What that means in most commonly is that someone went to the website, added a product to the cart, they checked out, and then they actually paid most likely by credit card. Um, and so now the, pre uh, the status is processing. What that means is I need to verify the order and I need to start uh, preparing the order and shipping it so I can give it to the customer. Okay, so let's click on the order right here and let's see some more information. So now I can see the order information, I can see the IP it was placed from, the customer's email, and this, of course this is just sample data, and uh, their billing address, shipping address, how they paid, the shipping rates, the quantity, the items they ordered, any promotions, things like that. Okay, so once I think that this is legit, this is correct, I need to process it, now I want to process it. So the next step for me to, is to actually uh, go to the warehouse or go to you know my room that has the package and start preparing it, right? So I know it should be in inventory, I know everything. So I'm going to look, uh, first of all, uh, what we like to do is kind of look from uh, like a uh, spam or a fraud prevention, look at if everything looks legit. So did someone order 50 products, did someone... A order from you know a billing address maybe in a different country and a shipping address local are there kind of any kind of triggers that make this order uh, not make sense so if everything's okay I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna view the product so I can see someone ordered uh, just this one product basically they ordered one uh, and I'm gonna go here get this product, put it in, in a box. So I can see the SKU, I'll scan in my warehouse or you know whatever process I'm using. I'm gonna go put that in a box. Once that's ready, okay, I'm actually going to go and I'm going to click on the ship button. So I put it in a package, I printed out a label, now either I scan it or I take it. So once I click on shipment button, I'm gonna go down to the bottom and I'm going to add a tracking number, right? So maybe they paid DHL and maybe this is the number one, two, three, whatever. Okay. Um, now, a Magento allows you to support multiple uh, packages. So potentially, if you had more than one item, you can submit either multiple packages if you separated or one at a time. Maybe um, you know this this vans you'll ship today and then tomorrow you'll ship another one. So you have the option of having more than one. Once I do, do that. I can submit the shipment. But before that, I can add some additional comments if I want either the 
admin. So I either want to see some comments about the order that is only for the business, or I can show ones that are going, going to be uh, for the customer. So I might say the customer, you know, maybe thanks for your patience. Okay. Uh, and then I will click here on email copy of shipment to the customer and I can allow, I can add the comments what I added right here to the order uh, the email confirmation and one, then once I click on submit shipment now I send out the package goes and you know should arrive in a day or two okay so now if I go back to sales orders now my status the actual status of the order is complete so what that means is I don't need to do as a business anything else uh, because I already sent out the package and it should arrive and that's it. So that is a simple thing. So an order happens, I need to prepare the shipment and I move on. Now, for example, uh, I want to give you a few other things. Uh, so let's go to this order right here. Now, once a, so I can re-review the shipments right here what I just created I can look at the tracking number um, I can look at the invoices so an invoice is basically um, when someone pays by credit card the system will automate automatically invoice the order or uh, you can also see it as kind of confirm an order that payment was made now if your business requirements need a different kind of invoicing you would change that but for most uh, kind of simple projects um, when someone pays an invoice automatically gets created, the status becomes processing, you ship it, the status becomes complete, and you're finished with the order. So uh, one more thing I want to mention is what happens if, let's say, the order got returned or it was shipped to the wrong place or a customer requested a refund or maybe a replacement or something like that. So if the customer wanted to uh, you know, send back the package or get a refund or cancel it, you would go to credit memos okay right here and you would create a credit memo okay um, so what you're doing is as a credit memo is basically the same kind of idea for returns or refunds so if I want to do that and I want to refund the customer everything back I can um, select a few options here so number one is if they submitted the package back or they never received it I can first of all return it to stock and verify what I'm wanting to uh, refund right here so I want to refund this one order I want to return it back to stock and if you notice here I also want to refund my shipping and uh, I can submit a refund okay so uh, you can also add more or uh, less money so you can uh, for example if I don't want to refund maybe I shipped it late and I told the customer service to give them some money back maybe because we shipped late we want to give them 50% back so um, I'm, I'm not going to refund this because they got the product I just want to give them money back and I'm not going to return to stock I click on update quantity and now my total refund is only the shipping so maybe I don't want to refund the shipping I want to give them let's say ten dollars back or half back whatever it might be right um, and I can submit the refund now uh, two more things that are important uh, sometimes you want to actually a uh, charge them more money and so maybe you can tell them okay we'll send you something for free but you have to pay for shipping so maybe the shipping would be five dollars so I would actually uh, refund them ten but I would actually charge them five something like that okay um, the second thing is that you can again in the confirmation email if you want to send them an email you're gonna click to the customer email copy and and submit the refund or you can also add comments and then append the comments to them as well so uh, last thing is the reason why the button says refund offline is because I'm using a test site and I didn't integrate my payment uh, processing but if you integrate uh, your payment uh, for example your payment company your processing company maybe PayPal or authorized.net or uh, Braintree or stripe or whatever it is if you integrate it correctly you can have this credit memo actually request money to be uh, sent back to their credit card uh, and so once you click on it let's click on refund okay now in the, the credit memos you actually have refunds that you've created okay um, so that's kind of a quick overview if you have any specific requirements um, let me know and uh, I'll be I'll be happy to help thank you